We shall never completely understand the Japanese mind, but then they don't understand ours either. Otherwise, there would never have been a Pearl Harbor. But we must try to understand Japan because we have become locked in the closest of all relationships, war. Whether we like it or not, we and the Japanese are going to be a very close range for a very long time. So let's see what kind of people these Japanese really are, what they believe in, what they want, and how they get it. And if this tale begins to get a little fantastic, bear with us. We're dealing with the fantastic people. First, let's examine a typical Japanese soldier. His average height is five feet, three inches. His average weight, 117 pounds. He and his brother soldiers are as much alike as photographic prints off the same negative. His pay is 10 yen, or about $2.36 a month. His personal equipment is simple but practical. Fully supplied with ammunition, the load he carries weighs about 60 pounds, more than half his weight. His uniform is ill-fitting. His appearance unsoldierly, even comic according to Western standards. At drill, he may lack precision. But he is hard. He is able. He knows his job. His endurance is phenomenal. He just as soon go over a mountain as around it. He lives on rice. Rice and fish, or occasionally rice and meat but often on rice alone, and he's proud of it. He is prouder still of the fact that to be a soldier is the highest human achievement in Japan. He has been trained to be a soldier almost from birth, and into his tough little mind has been drilled and hammered the fanatical belief that Japanese are descendants of gods and destined to rule the earth and all who live on it. To this end, treachery, brutality, rape, and torture are all justified if used against non-Japanese. <laughs> In combat, his single aim is to close with the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. He believes that in the attack itself, there is some mystic virtue by which greater numbers bearing superior weapons can be vanquished. <laughs> In his mind, there is usually no question of choice between death and surrender. To him, death in battle is the attainment of an ideal. Where his flag leads, he follows in a blind emotional rush. For his flag not only represents his country, it is also the image of his God of gods. His flag is the rising sun, and the rising sun is the symbol of the emperor. To the Japanese, their emperor is the most holy of holies, their visible god. He is also their political ruler, the natural and supernatural. Religion and politics all done up in a one-man package. In plus to one man, the powers of the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the Premier of Soviet Russia, add to them the powers of the Pope, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, then top it all with the divine authority of our own Son of God, and you will begin to understand what Hirohito means to the Japanese, why they call him the God Emperor. For to the Japanese, Hirohito is a direct descendant of the Sun, and what is so high, so brilliant, and so mighty as the Sun? Accordingly, no one can stand above or look down upon the Emperor. When he passes through the streets, all windows above the first floor must be tightly shuttered. The train to Tokyo from anywhere in Japan is the up train to Tokyo because the emperor lives there. Nor can the emperor be imitated in any way. Only his automobile may be maroon colored. Not even his tailor may touch the person of the emperor, for who would lay hands upon the sun? If you are Japanese, it actually hurts your eyes to look at Hirohito, just as it hurts your eyes to look at the blazing sun. Nor would anyone dream of handling his uncovered picture. 
when Hirohito's face appeared on the front cover of an American magazine, the Japanese government filed an official protest with the American State Department. Whatever takes place in Japan, it is he, the God Emperor, that causes it. From him all things emanate, and in him all things subsist. He makes the Japanese rice grow. He makes Japanese soldiers conquer the world. In his name, they bring to other people justice, enlightenment, truth, co-prosperity, and peace.